Here is the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe Limited in earthy brass matte over black leather interior. It's refreshed. Standard turbo charge, more towing, longer, wider, standard third row. I'm Anthony from All Kyle Rides, and I'm going to break this review down in three different parts. So the exterior, the interior, some of the performance in the drive, going to some pros and cons and comparable rivals. We're gonna start up front with standard H LED headlights that integrate into the illuminated light bar housed in between the gloss black and the lower will get the matte black with the H design front and rear parking sensors with the 360 degree reverse camera. You go the XRT, which is kind of a sweet spot. You're going to have a unique grill. The fenders, they flare out. You're gonna have the matte black. When you go into the calligraphy, it's gonna get gloss black elements that's going to surround the whole side. Underneath the hood, housing only one engine variant, which is the turbocharged 2.5 liter inline four cylinder, producing 277 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed wet dual clutch automatic transmission front wheel drive. So it's achieving 20 MPGs for the city, 29 MPGs for the highway. And that's good for a tow at 3,500 pounds. The XRT comes standard with all wheel drive, which maxes at 4,500 pounds of towing, nearly 1,700 pounds payload so when you're thinking the prior gen to this it's a completely different vehicle and if you're comparing it against honda and toyota this is going to be one of the best in class and it actually goes into a segment that's in between two different trims because of them extending the length and making it a standard third row 20 inch wheels start on the limited trim 21 for the calligraphy with a unique 18 inch for the xrt and 18 inch wheels are going to be standard satin aluminum on the lower and you're going to get the gloss black on the A pillar and across all the window trim to make a seamless design. When you go into the XRT, they change this out. This is gonna have a little hidden handle so you can climb up onto these raised roof rails in which you can fit 220 pounds. The XRT is not only going to be aesthetics, it increases the ground clearance to 8.3 inches. Standard is at seven inches. So it's gonna be a little bit more off-roadsy and it's also going to change the wheels to all terrain tires. So I like that Hyundai is going that extra step and not just giving you a visual off-road vehicle. Now it's not going to be something that's gonna go like a Jeep Wrangler, but it is going to be able to compete with Honda, Toyota, and Mazda, in which this is the segment that it fits in. The side air vent, you're gonna have the Defender badging. Just kidding, the Santa Fe. It's non-functional, but it does give a styling element. And with this matte color, I picked this one out because I thought, you know, this is the most unique Santa Fe that I've seen. And when you're thinking pricing, for around 50 grand, you're getting all this. When you go into Toyota, Honda, Mazda, it's gonna be a lot more. The signature H comes into the back LED tail lights. I do not like the way the rear exit is because the whole trunk opens, but I do like how it optimizes space because now you're going wall to wall and you don't have any pillars blocking you for the entrance. And that's basically the idea behind it. A lower gets the parking sensors, a single exhaust outlet. Because we're in the limited trim, I wish it had dual exhaust outlets. It's gonna be a little bit more cleaned up with an 80s vibe instead of that Defender vibe that you're getting on the side and cleaning up the rear windshield wiper, tucking it underneath the lower roof spoiler. Now there has been a lot of concerns about the eight-speed wet dual clutch automatic transmission because there has been some that's failed on the 24 model. But this is not something new either. That's a carryover from the prior gen. They didn't change anything with the transmission nor the suspension or the engine, just giving us a standard turbocharged engine with no increase to performance. Power lift gate is standard on all trims. The whole back will open up. It does sit up a little bit, but the opening kind of brushes upwards with a 12 volt charger. A Little bit of storage underneath the floor and a split fold the third row at a 50-50 split, and this is going to increase cargo to 40.5 cubic feet. And to put the third row bench down, just push the button. That's gonna max cargo to 79.6 cubic feet. Twelve-way power seat adjustment and memory seat for the driver. Heated, ventilated front seats. H Tech starts on the SEL. Eight-way power seat for the passenger. These are leather seats because of the limited trim. Headroom and legroom. 
It's a box outside, a box inside, so you're gonna have a lot of space, including storage space, UVC compartment, stand sanitation, Bose upgraded sound system that starts on this tier, auto dimming rear view mirror with the home link, two panel moon roofs that start on this tier and two 12.3 inch screens with actual buttons. So you don't have to use everything through this area here. But if you want to, you can, and you can also expand this out or you can use this as a quick wedge. Wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, AM FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Hyundai Pay, Hyundai Digital Key, quiet cabin, put it into reverse, and yes, we got a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory, you can also change the layout so you can line it up for towing, and you can do the 3D, which you can go all around the vehicle. The XRT will actually start with this, that's kind of a sweet spot, I like the wood inlays that go underneath it, the gauge cluster that is attached to the same glass panel is a digital reader, and when you turn your signals, you can see them in the gauge cluster. You also can go through an array of information, including the turn-by-turn -turn navigation and different settings for the vehicle. Dual climate control settings with the touch pad, driving mode select right underneath it, in which you got three different modes. Wireless charging pad, calligraphy, we'll get another wireless charging pad. The key fob for the new Santa Fe. And the cool thing about these key fobs is if you look at it from a distance, it makes the Hyundai badging. Cup holders and a lot of more storage underneath with a 12 volt. It's going to be a little bit more sporty, opens up this way, and it'll open up in the back, which I'll show you in a second. And it's a deep storage pocket, and it goes, I would say, almost to the cup holders underneath. Steering wheel's leather wrap, it's heated, multi-function, get the paddle shifts, and we got that aluminum inlays. The gear lever is now attached to the steering column, which gives a lot more room for the center cluster. Door panel and dash can figure it together and you get the ambient lighting that you'll see throughout. With the aluminum inlays, the wood comes into play. Soft touch where it needs to be, one touch up and down for the front windows with a medium sized storage pocket and a beverage holder carved out. For the second row, headroom and leg room. And you can recline these and move them forward and backwards. I would say about this position here so I could actually fit in the back. And to recline it back, no one's going to fit behind me. The center is going to have cup holders with an armrest. And you have two drawers of storage. So you have a deep storage bin. And this opens up this way. Similar to an Infinity. With USB ports behind both of the front seats. Area here that you can hang up some clothes. And I like that they put the same design that's in the front in the seats and you'll also see that in the center of the seat with storage behind both of the front manual sunshades come on this trim underneath it you will not get it it's going to have the wood inlays with the satin aluminum rear heated seats start on the limited trim cup holders in the top and another beverage holder in the bottom sliding into the center you pretty much have your own area for feet the rails are pushed up but in shoulder space is not too bad. I have moved the seats so that way you can see it can be a bit uncomfortable depending on fitting people in the back. The headroom isn't an issue with this pano. To enter to the third row, push the button. It's gonna slide forward. It's gonna be a little bit tight, but it's still doable to fit two more in the back. To turn the rear air vents on, it's going to be only on this side here. You have a home plug with a USB port, cup holders. The windows are pretty big. I've reclined it back and pushed it to the full extent and both sides will have the same amenities. Let's slide this back so you can see leg space about midway. It's not going to be too bad. The rails are pushed back, but it's a two passenger for the third row. So it's not too bad, even though this kind of bulges out, but it just more or less carves out a feet space. Headroom is actually pretty good because that's also carved out and these seats recline when you find the lever. Ah, there we go. And then it's gonna be a little bit more enjoyable, especially if the seats are kind of in the middle position, but if they're back, there's no way somebody at six foot or six foot three is gonna fit. 277 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque, that's standard. And look, we're gonna put it into sport so you can see the performance.
And that's all paired to the eight speed wet dual clutch automatic transmission, which people consider is a big problem. We'll get to that later on in the review. Dynamically, this is not that vehicle. This is an everyday vehicle. So you're gonna wanna slow down. Twisty roads, you're not gonna have so much fun with it. It's gonna feel like a box, that's what it is, but it has a lot of room in the interior. Standard third row, go to the calligraphy, you get captain seats. When you get into the XRT, that's the sweet spot. However, you're downgrading in wheels. You go to 18 inch wheels, but I understand you need to do that to put all terrain tires because of the size of this vehicle. You also increase in clearance to 8.3 inches opposed to the standard seven inches. So I like the configuration of the new Santa Fe, the fifth gen, I think they nailed it, especially with that Defender look. The windows, everything is just large. You could see everything but you can also feel everything too. And you'll slide right off the road if you don't take your time on some of these turns. As for competition, Honda, Toyota, Mazda, I hate to say it, they gotta step up their game. Now the increase in price, that to me is a con because it's around four or five grand opposed to the fourth gen. Yes, you're getting quite a bit from the prior. But in the same token, it's a carryover suspension, carryover engine, carryover transmission. Now to go into some pros, the interior has the most storage nooks throughout. This is very family oriented, standard third row. Tech is good. If you go up to the calligraphy, you get a his and her wireless charging pad, plus those captain seats. The limited trim is good because you get the sunshades for the second row, so it's a little bit more private and leather seats in the interior, ventilated front seats and heated second row seats. And you have the UVC protection for that top glove box, which you push it on and it will basically sanitize everything in the top storage or you could just simply use it as another glove box. So I like that they have went steps above other vehicles in class and yet you're still saving even though they have increased the price from the prior gen. You will hear some of the road noise filter and it's a bit of a windy day. When you're figuring 20 inch wheels, I'm expecting to hear some of that. You don't feel too many of the imperfections in the drive though. So I like that because when you're sitting a little bit lower to the ground with clearance, typically you'll start feeling some of that. The seat cushioning kind of helps out as well. But then we don't have any cushion extensions, which would be a nice little attribute. And then you have to go to the calligraphy in order to get more or less the massage seat, which is only on the driver's side, and they do that with Genesis as well. The adaptive cruise control in this is one of the best by far. I mean, I've said it before in another review that I've done on the Santa Fe, it's similar to an AMG Mercedes, in which that particular car that I did was an SL63. Those are very expensive. It went nearly two miles without being engaged. This goes basically the same, if not a little bit further. Some cons about the vehicle is you have to go into the infotainment screen to change the gauge cluster layout, which makes it a little bit confusing for first time owners for Hyundai. And it can be a little bit overwhelming for the infotainment screen because there's a lot of different configurations that you can go into. You have to go up trims in order to get features is another big problem to me because they're doing the same thing as Honda in which Toyota's doing the same thing. And I kind of wish that you could package some of those things. So whenever you're thinking, well, I want the XRT because of the styling, but I want some of the luxury of the limited. You can't configure it that way. You have to just go up to the next tier and then you're losing the clearance and you're losing the exterior appearance as well. Turn radius at a stop point is going to get right at two lanes. It's rock and roll. Just kidding. It's not that type of vehicle. I mean, you saw the way it is for performance wise, but as for an everyday vehicle, family use, going against competition, third row standard, turbocharged, it doesn't feel like it needs more power. I do wish they would have changed the transmission, but let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like, and I'd like to thank Hyundai of Newport Ritchie for giving us this 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe Limited for our car review.